is a uh, presentation from the Transportation Authority of Marin regarding Measure A, uh, Transportation Sales Tax and the proposed draft Transportation Sales Tax Renewal Expenditure Plan. Good morning. Well, let me, while she's pulling this up, let me do a brief introduction. I'm Diane Steinhauser, the Executive Director of TAM. Mm -hmm. And we were out about a year ago in January and February of 2017 talking to our local jurisdictions regarding a consideration of raising the half cent transportation sales tax countywide. Um, we were seeking acceptance of a set aside within the sales tax cap at the state level for us to be able to consider a three quarter cent tax. Um, that was not received very strongly by our cities and towns, and so we reset and instead completed an education process last spring of what we currently fund in the sales tax. The TAM board, of which you are all members, decided in May to form an expenditure plan advisory committee. The committee met between June and December, and in December you received a unanimous recommendation from them on renewing the half-cent transportation sales tax. You also authorized TAM to go out and receive input from all of our cities and towns, and uh, we have, will be completing that 11 city town tour this evening, going to the city of San Anselmo. So um, we're here to do a very brief presentation on what is included. This is very similar to what we've been explaining to our cities and towns. And at the town board meeting this Thursday, we'll be reporting in more detail on input from the cities and towns and asking for approval of a draft final expenditure plan. Note that each city and town then needs to consider formal approval of the sales tax uh, expenditure plan. So the first round was briefings and the next round will be seeking approval. I'm going to move over. Thank you much. TAM provides a variety of transportation to uh, a variety of constituents here in Marin making multimodal mobility choices available and protecting the quality of life and the environment and the choices that we've made. Oh, that's, yeah. Okay, there you go. Um, local funds are critical. This is very typical for around the state. Bay Area wide, the average uh, transportation funding pie shows about 71% from local sources. In Los Angeles, this is as high as 73%. Orange County, 68 um, In Marin, local sources comprise 72%, roughly, of the funds that we receive for transportation. 30 years ago, in the 80s, you would see more like 75% state and federal funds met our transportation needs. But beginning in the mid-80s, uh, counties around the state knowing that state and federal funds weren't available, started to approve local transportation sales taxes. The first one being Santa Clara in uh, 1984. There are 24 counties statewide that have transportation sales taxes. And there are eight of nine counties in the Bay Area that have transportation sales taxes. Uh, this is our existing sales tax, Measure A, approved in 2004. This will look very familiar to you. In many ways, uh, this was a moment in time with respect to needs in transit due to the dot-com bust and the decline of sales tax and other revenues for transit, uh, a desire to finish the carpool lane project through San Rafael, the ongoing needs which we still have in addressing local streets and roads, and the likely ending of our Safe Routes to School program back then if we didn't have a dedicated fund source. Um, moving forward with no new tax, why would we do this now? Our tax expires March 31st, 2025. Um, the current plan is about 15 years old. Uh, we have a number of new needs that aren't addressed in the current plan. There are things that we cannot spend funding on. Uh, the current plan is our Bible. We adhere to it very carefully. Uh, we're not authorized to spend funds on interchanges, on sea level rise, on support to employer and employees, on commute alternatives, <laughs> uh, the direct connector from northbound 101 to 580, the Marin Sonoma Narrows, and alternative fuel uh, investments and innovation. All of these 
are included in the new plan. The new plan provides an ongoing stream of funds. Uh, we know that uh, longer term contracts, both for TAM and for Marin Transit, yield more cost effective results. So we don't want to get too close to the expiration. The expenditure plan committee uh, was very aware that transportation needs are changing and will continue. They recommend a mandatory 10 year review of how we're spending the funds. In the proposal that TAM is bringing to you and the full TAM board Thursday, we're asking that the review of the plan and a possible reset could occur as early as seven years, but no later than 10 years. This gives you a chance to reset how the funds will be spent with the changing environment that we're in. The TAM board authorized a poll that was taken in January. You can read here the results of the poll. This is very similar to a poll we conducted last May. In this case, it was about 800 likely voters in the upcoming November election. Higher priorities, relieving traffic congestion, potholes, that direct connector from 101 to 580, uh, congestion relief on local roads, and addressing sea level rise, which was very strong in the poll last May as well. Lower on the priority list for the public, critical gaps in bike paths, incentives to use electric vehicles, uh, maintain and expanding crossing guards and other safe routes to school elements and critical gaps in pedestrian pathways. Um, note that the expenditure plan committee respected the poll. They didn't take it literally, but they were very aware that we needed two-thirds approval to get the public to authorize an extension of the sales tax. Um, the, the poll got a 77.9% approval rating with this 75 word ballot measure. After reading uh, nine oppositional statements, which our pollster said is much more than the four or five that are usually read, we dropped to a 73.2% rating. But if you remember, um, the, the, the polling firm Godby and Associates said even at 73.2%, that's a very strong place to start in going to the public with a two-thirds measure approval. An expenditure plan committee was formed. You accepted that membership last May. They met nine times. Um, they were very aware of Senate Bill 1 and Regional Measure 3, and I want to talk about them for one minute. Senate Bill 1 is a formula distribution to state highway rehab and maintenance, local road rehab and maintenance, and a smaller amount of funds for transit and rail. 80% of the funds go out by formula. There are competitive programs that we are actively competing in. You can see them on this list. But there's no guarantee that we will be getting those competitive funds. We've had some success, but we've also had to stand aside for other higher priority, larger county needs around the state. Senate Bill 1 will bring $8 million to Marin County for local streets and roads. We put in about 3.5 million a year. So this is a substantial increase over what the measure can provide currently, uh, the $8 million. Regional Measure 3 it will be on the ballot June 5th. This is a $3 staged over a six year period. Increase in Bay Area tolls requires a 50% approval is applied to the seven state owned toll bridges, not the Golden Gate. Regional Measure 3 funds a handful of very big projects that we need in Marin County. It funds the downtown Bettini Transit Center. It funds the 101 to 580 connector the Marin-Sonoma Narrows completion of the carpool lane and multi-use path and State Route 37 improvements. It also uh, provides access to funds for Bay Trail improvements, the Smart Extension north to Hillsburg and Windsor, and transit access improvements in the North Bay counties. We believe we will get funds from all of these as well. Please note that Marin and Sonoma contribute about 6% of the toll stream on the seven Bay Area toll bridges and we're scheduled to receive about 11% of the funds. So Regional Measure 3 is good for us in getting over the hump on a couple of major projects. They couldn't be funded otherwise. Also note that our sales tax raises about $25 million and it, it would be difficult to keep core programs going while funding mega projects with these dollar amounts that are shown on the sheet. Um, so what does the sales tax include? I'm going to talk very quickly about three items and then introduce Marin Transit. The sales tax protects the core programs that we currently fund. It protects funding for transit, 
funding for highways and interchanges, funding for safe routes. Transit and safe routes in particular don't have other sources to turn to. The Expenditure Plan Committee recognized what was funded in SB1 RM3 and they chose to put into this sales tax renewal the things that we're not going to find funds for in those other programs, including transit operating, local streets and roads, innovation, technology, alternative fuels. 7% uh, of the money will be dedicated to highway and interchange improvements. Um, we are working very hard, I am working very hard on your behalf to try and complete the design right-of-way and permitting for the Marin Sonoma Narrows. Uh, we've dedicated local funds to this, mm -hmm. but we haven't been able to complete all that preparatory work to get the project shelf ready. While Regional Measure 3 will provide capital funds for the Narrows and the connector, we need a small amount of local funds to get those projects shelf ready, get them to the front of the line, and be ready when these funds become available. We're working on that, but we're short of funds. So there is a small amount of money for those two major projects to leverage these larger capital fund sources from either SB1 or RM3. We also have a new dedicated uh, funding program for interchanges. We have about 10 interchanges on the list. Um, you will see that in the TAM presentation this Thursday. And again, this isn't enough funding at 7% of about a $25, $27 million annually to rebuild interchanges, but it does the planning, the public outreach, the scoping, the environmental studies necessary for improvements to local interchanges for all modes, including all the work that we've been doing with the state and looking at bike and pedestrian access across 101 at these interchanges, those improvements could also be considered. And finally, we have a small dedicated fund source for commute alternatives and trip reduction for employers. Local streets and roads, um, we are continuing a commitment that was made in the present measure for major road projects, but we are not continuing with the major roads program. That original program at about 13.25%, those funds will be rolled into several other programs in this measure. This is where we're finding additional funds by continuing the commitment to the major road projects on the books, but by not continuing that program overall over time. So, uh, addition, uh, current major road projects will be completed, but we have new categories, a higher level of funding for direct subvention to cities and towns. We go from 13 to 22 percent. And then new categories for sea level rise and for innovation. So far, the county's received $11 million, about $1 million an annually over the course of the measure. This will be increased to $1.8 million annually under the new measure proposal. Um, so stay tuned for uh, the ability to uh, receive more funds locally. They're very important in terms of match and the flexibility they provide in being local only funds. I finally want to conclude my part of this with a short discussion of safe routes to school. We are increasing all three categories of the safe routes to school program. This includes crossing guards. You will be receiving a recommendation on Thursday to increase the crossing guard funding from 88 to 96 guards countywide. We have about 60 schools currently active in safe routes. Safe pathways, we're increasing that funding. We're adding in a small project funding category where simple projects around schools could be done in very quickly uh, in the $25,000 to $35,000 range. We've experimented with this and it's proven very successful. Here's projects in Marin County that you've benefited from. The Safe Pathways, over $2 million in funding over the last several years. Um, finally, on uh, uh, Safe Routes Education, we are increasing the education pot from around 3% to 3.5%. So we want to continue the work we're doing in schools and grow it if we can. So education, safe pathways, and crossing guards are all protected under this program. I'd now like to introduce Nancy Whelan, who's going to talk briefly. You want to sit here? Oh, you can. Okay. Okay. All right. 
uh, who's going to be talking briefly about the transit investments. And pardon my raspy voice this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Um, good morning. I'm Nancy Whelan, General Manager at Marin Transit. And I uh, just want to talk a little bit about the, the transit element here. And uh, when we look back to 2004, Marin Transit was facing some very significant service cutbacks. And with the passage, or since the passage of Measure A, we've been able to add 125% more service across all programs uh, countywide. So w we've been able to expand all of our key transit programs in serving seniors, uh, our students, and the less densely populated areas of the county. Our annual operating budget is $33 million a year, and Measure A provides 41% of all of the uh, annual operating revenue that we, we use. Because we were able to leverage those funds uh, with other funds, that investment then uh, uh, means that if we were to lose Measure A, if it were not renewed, we would lose more than just 41% of our service. We would actually estimate that we lose, we lose up to 60% of the service that we provide today. So we are very reliant on Measure A as a, an ongoing and reliable source of funds. Let me briefly highlight some of the services we provide across the county. We have 14 local bus routes, uh, which excludes the supplemental school service routes that I'll talk about in a minute. Services are timed or coordinated, in fact, fully integrated with the Golden Gate regional bus uh, service, regional basic service uh, to provide service every 15 minutes, five days a week, uh, along the Highway 101 corridor, including the Civic Center and Northgate area. Local routes also provide daily, all day, 15 minute service within the canal and 15 minute service between San Rafael and San Anselmo. We also provide connections to the new Smart Rail service. Muirwood Shuttle Service is provided in partnership with the National Park Service. And uh, in January, the Park Service initiated a, a new parking reservation and advanced ticketing program for the shuttle. At that time, we began operating the shuttle on all weekends, whereas previously we had only operated um, certain weekends during the year, what we call the season. And we will operate weekends and weekdays throughout the summer. In previous years, we have carried more than 125,000 passengers per year uh, on, on the shuttle. We expect to do more than that as we move to this reservation system. Stagecoach routes, oops. Sorry. Yeah, I'm jumping. Sorry. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll go faster. I'll go faster. Uh, Stagecoach Route 61 and 68 provide daily service to and from West Marin and carry an average of 300 passengers a day. Additional services provided on Route 61 during spring and summer weekends to accommodate the influx of visitors going to Mount Tam and Stinson Beach and other recreational areas. Uh, the rural services rely primarily on Measure A for funding, so without Measure A, it's unlikely that we could provide these services. Marin Transit offers two dial-a-ride services to West Marin communities, including a weekly service connecting Dillon Beach and Tamales to Petaluma, and a monthly service from Point Reyes Station to Nevada. These services provide curb-to-curb -curb pickups and drop-offs and are open to the general public. So go ahead. Thank you. Oh. All right. Um, Nearly 25% of all of our riders are under the age of 18. We offer nine transit routes serving 15 schools that are scheduled to meet the bell times of schools as well as a discounted youth pass program. The youth pass allows unlimited travel on Marin Transit routes but not on Yellow Bus and costs $325 for a year. And in 2017, fiscal year 2017, we uh, had more than 4,000 passes distributed in the county with 94% of those going to uh, families who, who were income qualified, so that was to the, for free to those students. We offered a new program in 2015 in partnership with the College of Marin, enabling students to use a valid college ID for travel on any local Marin Transit service at no additional cost, and about 500 College of Marin students' uh, trips are taken on our, daily, on our system daily uh, using that, that pass. We also support three yellow school bus programs serving nine schools in the county. Uh, 2,600 one-way passes were sold in the 2017-18 academic year on those, those three programs. Those are in um, Tiburon at the Reed Union School District, Mill Valley School District, and the Ross Valley School District. Without, um, well, these services are currently subsidized with Measure A funds, and under the proposed renewal of Measure A, school service is called out as a separate expenditure requirement. And unlike the current uh, measure where investments in school transportation are made at the discretion of the Marin Transit Board and TAM, the renewed measure will require a minimum commitment of 5% of the sales tax to be spent on school transportation. 
Marin County, as you know, is one of the healthiest counties in, uh, in the country, and it, uh, its residents can expect to live longer and healthier lives than almost anywhere in the, in the country. Uh, people will need more than just lifeline services as they, they age, and they need ways that are get, of getting around that are convenient, <coughs> cost-effective, and preferably uh, don't involve driving. They need, uh, to meet these needs, we are providing a range of services under the Marin Access brand, including ADA complimentary paratransit service. It's required by federal law. And we had more than 124,000 passenger trips uh, provided in Marin County last year on our paratransit service. We have a taxi subsidy program called Catch a Ride, where same day rides are provided to seniors and people who are paratransit eligible. And um, those are subsidized uh, trips. And we had over 16,000 passenger trips taken uh, last year on the Catch a Ride program. We also support volunteer driver programs. Uh, this, they're called Star and Trip, and the, there were over 16,000 trips taken on those last year. And then lastly, we provide an information, enrollment, and counseling service on transportation for Marin seniors and peoples with disabilities through our Travel Navigators program. And we took um, over 8,000 phone calls in fiscal year 16. All of these services are also dependent in whole or in part on Measure A. And under the proposed renewal, the commitment of funding under this category will uh, increase by half a percent from 9% to 9.5%. And um, that's all I have on Measure A. Thank you. Yeah, stick around. Okay. Um, in conclusion, <coughs> and by the way, I did want to mention that Expenditure Plan Committee thought long and hard about retaining 55% of the funds for transit. They recognized the diversity of the services transit provides, the need to try and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by alternative modes, and they ultimately agreed to retain the 55% assignment in recommending that to the full TAM board. TAM has had a long history of looking at alternative modes from the money that is assigned by TAM under the federal OBAG program to the money that we've been able to send to SMART to funds that uh, we were able to multiply through the non-motorized program and now through this measure. Uh, we're very proud, I, I, I would say, that, and, and very unique amongst the counties of the Bay Area in how much we dedicate to alternative modes. More than 75% of this measure renewal is dedicated to alternative modes. Uh, if you look at the Marin Sonoma Narrows being an HOV and multi-use path, the interchanges accommodating both bikes, pedestrians, transit, and cars, uh, upwards of 90% of the measure is actually assigned to alternative modes of travel. We're very proud of that fact. We've had significant green trips under safe routes and all the trips that we've been able to capture under transit as well. At this point, we are concluding our outreach to cities, towns, and to this board. We will be reporting on those results. We've been very favorably received by the cities and towns. Um, the public comment has centered around crossing guards and safe routes to school and electric vehicles, alternative fuel. The council comments have centered around more funds for school bus service and more funds for safe routes to school. Uh, we'll be doing a summary. Uh, the TAM board packet has all that outreach summarized for the TAM board on Thursday. Uh, we'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Questions. So thank you for that, that presentation and the fast pace at which you delivered it. Um, <laughs> so I have a question. In, the, you know, in our board packet, it includes a letter to our Director of Public Works, Raul Rojas, from TAM. And on page two of that letter, at the bottom it says, with no new taxes, the proposal would, and it then lists a series of bullet point items, one of which is expand school-related transit and yellow bus programs. Can you explain to me how that will be achieved, given that there are no new funds anticipated in the proposal? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, so you're, you're right. We are at 55 percent for transit, and uh, we're happy that we're able to retain that and that the EPAC was supportive of that. We do recognize that there is uh, more demand for school transportation services than we have currently have funding. So. What this requires is that we, there's about uh, $1.35 million a year is equal to the 5% requirement. 
And we currently spend about a million dollars on the programs that I showed up there on school transportation. So there's a net new expenditure requirement of $350,000 a year. So where does that come from, to answer your question? We will either have to use money from our existing fixed route services. That's a place that we would have to then look to trimming or somehow squeezing out some more productivity, getting something out of that program. Any of the new sources that we have uh, that may help us do that may include the SB1 revenues. So there is a, a slight increase to us because of that SB1. So we might be able to do that. Um, you, you may recall it at our Marin Transit Board meeting recently, we did do some of that very trimming. In fact, we looked at our the services that we increased back in June of 2016, and we took a very careful look, evaluated their productivity and that sort of thing, came to you with a recommendation to actually trim about 1,300 hours of service, and then to dedicate that to our fixed route school service where we have overcrowding on high school buses and other buses actually. They're serving middle schools as well, but we typically serve middle schools with those. So we're, we will come back to you once we know what the bell times look like in the fall as the Marin Transit Board and try to do that. So the, in the future, that's the kind of thing that we can do to try to, to achieve more. I just more. want to be clear though, the measure doesn't provide additional that's monies true. for yellow yes. school bus service. The only way to achieve an expansion of school bus service is for Marin Transit to trim and reallocate existing monies, correct? Yes, or use right. new, any new money that may be made available. Or if there are other monies outside of the measure, right? Yes, okay. yes. Thank you. And my only other comment is, and you alluded to it, I, I do think the 10 year for a review may be too long, and I'm glad that you will be proposing seven years. I was going to say even five with autonomous vehicles and, and changes we're anticipating and changes in needs for electric vehicles and whatnot. So I'm glad that that timing period is on the table for discussion. Other question? I don't have a question. Mm -hmm. Uh, to f yeah, thank you, both you, Diane and Nancy, and also you've been making the rounds and uh, just, I know it's been a ton of work going to the councils and uh, I don't even want to know how many hours you have logged. <laughs> um, I want to follow up on both items that Supervisor Sears brought up. One, uh, just to clarify that the school bus service that we're talking about that Marin Transit currently supports, its funding is both comes in two forms, both that supplemental service that is really our, our Marin Transit Golden Gate buses, mostly serving high schools. Um, they look like sort of normal routes. And then um, a smaller portion, there's some yellow school bus service that uh, Marin Transit operates. So it's not all yellow bus or all supplemental. It's a little bit of a combination. And it is informed, um, and any if we are there are additional monies that are allowed for, so it will be informed by um, the school bus uh, that study that was done, Correct. which is also geared at the wider range of school services, both the, the high school serving more typical transit as well as yellow bus. Yes. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I think it's. I think we need to be careful how we talk about that expansion of funding for school service. Um, and I want to tie this back to the 2004 um, original plan and that campaign, um, because one of the things we know about Marin County it has not changed. For Marin County residents, we're concerned about congestion, and in Measure A. Congestion relief was talked about very much in the frame of what everyone recognized the tranche of driving that is most easily attacked in that school related traffic. Mm -hmm. And so the school bus service is so important, but also how we communicate about it is important in terms of it. It, it really, it, people get it, people know it is congestion relief. We have to talk about it in that way. Um, then also on the interval, I think I do, I agree as well. I think it, um, in terms of the reset button, that interval, whether it's, um, I, I don't know what the right number is, but 10 years did seem like too long. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that, I don't know if seven years is the right number, but maybe there's a, a soft check at a more frequent interval that doesn't require a total reboot. Anyway, just a suggestion. And then lastly, um, again on the, um, on the climate. So as I understand it, on the local streets and roads bucket, we're sort of we're, we're trying to sort of build in flexibility in there for the local jurisdictions to apply those monies in in, in a host of ways as would be appropriate or as how they deem appropriate within the within the parameters of that budget bucket. Diane, 
Uh, this, this, would you say that again? The local streets Pardon bucket. Me. Yes. Which has a number of ways that a local jurisdiction can decide how to spend those monies. Correct. And can you, it, any changes, what, what are the changes again between what exists currently and what's being proposed? Uh, absolutely. Um, what we're doing with the local street and road funds, as well as two other categories I should mention, is we're opening up the eligibility within those categories to include alternative fuel vehicles and the infrastructure associated with them. So in local streets and roads, in local road quarters, in sea level rise, in resiliency for transportation, as well as in Marin Transit's capital program for buses, we're adding reference to alternative fuel vehicles and, uh, and uh, the infrastructure associated with them. So that would uh, allow, in, in any of those categories, a decision to be made to uh, support that new category. And there is a whole variety of yeah, eligibility could, I actually think within you might local wanna, streets and you roads. You might want to name those all. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the little teeny tiny print. I mean, it's everything from <laughs> paving, pavement, I mean, roadway pavement repairs, crosswalk, curb cuts, uh, bike. I mean, it's a host of items. And I think it's Correct. important that there's flexibility in there, as well as whatever additions. Because from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, there's different needs and actually different funding capacity with their own local taxes. And, and in fact, flexibility was one of the uh, strongest comments that we received from our cities and towns out at the councils is to give them the ability to look at their needs and to use these funds. Another thing I do want to mention with respect to local streets and roads is investments to address congestion on local street and road corridors. So this is a broad category uh, of what the local uh, agencies could use these funds for. Um, and that, that opens the gate to a number of alternative modes, including anything that they may want to do around transit at the local level, facilities for alternative fuel vehicles, new technologies, uh, et cetera. All of these, kind of a complete streets kind of a rubric are allowable under the infrastructure funds, which again are almost doubled from the current 13% to 22%. And these are funds that you bill me for in June and I send you a check in July. So you as the uh, administrator of funding f for capital transportation improvements have sole discretion on how these funds are used. And we pay them in advance. So, Thanks. yeah. Um, Diane, thank you for the presentation. Nancy, thank you. On local streets and roads, you mentioned major roads that we would fund the current Correct. projects. But does that mean that funding goes away? It sounds like it does. And if it does, is there another funding location that that could come out of? Um, in, in terms of not, not this measure. This is a very, very good question and a very key point. Um, we wanted to retain the commitments we'd made. We have a number of sponsors relying on these major, major road funds going forward, but the program is ending. Um, do we only give them a portion of the funds or do we continue the commitment? Our recommendation is going to be to continue the commitment with what we call an off-the-top major roads uh, amount of money. Right now, because in the original measure we envisioned bonding for either Highway 101 improvements or major roads, we took a small share, 2.3 million off the top, for bond reserve, for debt reserve, to pay the debt. We're going to take that same dollar amount, but we're going to call it our major road reserve. The resultant impact will not be any significant reduction at all in the funds that we distribute currently. We'll maintain the core programs that we've talked about, transit safe routes, local roads. But that major roads off the top will allow us to continue the work on a series of major road projects uh, in Marin County in the north, that's Nevada Boulevard, scheduled to receive 11 million. In central Marin, it's 3rd and 2nd Street in San Rafael at 12 million. In southern Marin, there's an additional 1.9 million after Miller Avenue that would be remaining for the next priority being to uh, East Blythdale. Uh, and then finally, uh, Ross Valley, 11.9 million for the current. Sir Francis Drake project that the county is completing the environmental on, and then a tiny amount in West Marin that's left over as well, 74,000. So, so I think my question was after we fund those, yes. where, would, where would major roads find funding? 
Well, the major road program, since we've completed the highest priority projects, is will not exist anymore. So the money is being converted to a local road subvention. Um, when that takedown is done, I think we're proposing 14 or 15 years, then that money can be reassigned. It's part of that review and reboot of the expenditure plan. Okay. You will have those funds available. I totally concur that the reboot mm -hmm. is important, and I think seven years should be sort of the max, mm -hmm. ideally, and that we might want to start it at five and a half years, mm -hmm. considering how long it probably takes to go through this, so that we can be ready in seven years to have a new expenditure plan if it's needed. So We'll take that into consideration. Yeah. Why don't we go to members of the public on this item? <clears throat> Come on up. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to point out, by the way, that um, we're, uh, there was a rate hearing supposed to be at 1030 for Marin Sanitary. I kind of wonder whether uh, it's appropriate for us to still be going on about right TAM. Um, <clears throat> but uh, be that as it may, um, uh, I'm Amy Willard. I live in Kentfield. And um, I'm talking now as a resident of the Ross Valley. And uh, I think that the, that the renewal of the Transportation Authority of Marin sales tax, at the end of the day, is a referendum on the job that they are doing, the priorities that have been set, whether we think that we have received any congestion relief for our congestion relief sales tax, which has been marketed as such, and cost efficiency. So <clears throat> in my neighborhood, we have the Sir Francis Drake Improvement Project, which we were told was a $6 million repaving project for which TAM, for whatever reasons, gave the county $13 million. And we're, and we're supposed to believe that this just kind of happened like it was a Christmas gift. So <clears throat> as a result, this repaving project has become a Christmas tree, which has been loaded up with all kinds of stuff to make specific neighbors or constituencies happy. And what we're going to end up with is a, is a two-year construction project that is going to snarl the entirety of central Marin and that is filled with traffic calming elements that will permanently degrade service getting to the 101. Uh, many residents objected and wanted a just pave it approach. And that was never really considered as one of the options. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't entered into the range of options that were allowed to be discussed. Um, so I would say I personally, uh, I'm going to oppose the renewal of Measure A uh, until we have a better sense of accountability of what's happening with our funds. Thank you. Other members of the public? Okay, I'm going to bring it back to the board, and we're being asked to accept the report and offer feedback, which I think uh, has already occurred, but any additional thoughts? At this time. Diane, could you just speak to the um, accountability over the Sir Francis Drake project funding and where um, folks can get information on that project? Absolutely. The um, Sir Francis Drake project is uh, currently completing its environmental review. Um, there's quite a bit of information on the county's website uh, regarding the uh, pursuit of that project. It is a county-sponsored project. Uh, the project features the scope and the activity are brought to two subcommittees of TAM, our Citizens Oversight Committee and our Technical Advisory Committee. But more importantly, and so they've looked at how the projects progressed, uh, first planning funds, environmental funds, design funds, and gotten regular reports. We also report to the TAM board on the progress of our major road projects on a reg regular basis. But more importantly, the county's conducted numerous public workshops trying to capture the needs of all users of the corridor. And that really is a facet of the current sales tax and the future sales tax 
that we look at the needs of everyone when we do a quarter improvement. So um, it's not untypical of other improvements made, whether it would be 4th Street West End, Miller Avenue, um, the work on Avado Boulevard. It's looking at the needs of everyone. And this project follows that same line and is overseen, most importantly, by our Citizens Oversight Committee so that they can be sure the funds are spent in accordance with the rules that are drafted in the expenditure plan. And I'll just add that that project is going to be coming to our board, the environment, the, the CEQA document for that, yeah. for review and certification in a month or two. Yeah. I don't have the date mm -hmm. in front of me. Do we need to take action? No, this is a discussion yeah. only. And uh, uh, we thank you very much for giving us some time. Thank you. So. <clears throat> OK, in the interest of time, because we are running considerably over time, um, I'm going to move item 14 up uh, for consideration right now.